Um, but anyway, all that to say that when it comes to um, what I'm about to do today, we're going to do some spring pole work. It is an excellent way to exercise your dog. Um, when it comes to a spring pole, a spring pole has pretty much everything that a dog wants out of a toy, except for one thing, and that is a squeak, <laughs> um, which depending on what toy or what you put on the end of it, it might have that too. But what I'm getting at is it's got the resistance, it's a toy, it's got a spring load on it, so it's got a little push and pull with it. And it gives them a little bit of feedback and it's just enough. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of push and pull. Um, but when it comes to it, it gives them that feedback that helps them to keep going. It keeps them driving. It keeps them in that state. It keeps them feeling like there's something going on at the other end of what's in my mouth, you know. Um, so when it comes to working with the spring pole, um, again, I don't advise this for somebody who's not experienced working with dogs. I don't advise this for somebody who is um, not experienced with the dog that they are working with. Again, uh, it can be very intense and it can lead to um, situational errors, which could easily be avoided if you know how to work with the dog and, and keep them and yourself safe. Um, so... I just kind of want to put all that out there and then also say that as far as the dogs are concerned, um, there are some very specific muscles that tug of war and a flirt stick and a spring pole are going to work out that aren't worked out in the same way as, um, as with pretty much any other activity that you can do. These are sprints. These are intense. These are high energy, uh, low volume workouts. And um, it's tough to it's tough to replace that, you know. Um, and then again, when it comes to something like weight pulling, um, it's a lot easier for a dog to pull a 200 pound uh, weight that weighs more than me. Right. It's a lot easier for him to pull that. But if there's me on the other end of that pole or on the other end of that, that uh, that lead that's carrying the weight, the chain, whatever you're using, um, then he's not pulling me, you know, I, I can pull him right back and I'll pull him clear across these five acres um, and give him a workout that is active and live. I can give him a little inch or two, build up his confidence a little bit and then pull him back and, and, and make him get that workout in. It's not too far removed from when we go for our sprints next to a bike or next to a golf cart. And we are um, we're doing almost the the dog equivalent of a fart lick where we're. Um, where we're sprinting for a little bit, running for a little, jogging for a little bit, running for a little bit, sprinting for a little bit, and just changing and doing interval training. That would be another way to, to put that. So um, when it comes to it, there's a lot of advantages to these and there's a lot of place for them, but it's really easy to do it incorrectly and really teach your dog bad habits. So I would say for one, um, I'm not advising this is something for everybody. I, I do think it's something everybody can learn um, not everybody will, but everybody can learn and everybody can do again. Not everybody will do, but everybody can do. Um, and generally speaking, if you can work with and control a Tosa, you can do this exercise. It takes a bit of education, just as much education as it took to learn how to work with your dog. Um, but it's something that you can do. And it's something that again, is a very, very good way to build up good, solid, um, it's good solid muscle, power muscle, that is not going to be necessarily as cut muscle as we get from our, our, our uh, 10, 15, 20 mile runs, but it is good powerful muscle that the dog is going to need in addition to everything else. This is made strictly for you guys, um, for one, for you to be able to see what some of the stuff that I'm doing, some of the work that I'm doing um, with our dogs and, and kind of spark some ideas on things you might want to try. For two, to see the potential of the Tosa. Um, I get a lot that, um, you know, a lot of the people that I've talked to in Europe can't imagine a Tosa being able to run, uh, let alone sustain it for, for instance, a mile or two. And I've made videos like this to help them to see um, our dogs at work. Uh, but today we're going to work with Mr. Yoshi, and I just sent a video of him the other day running 10 miles. And I mean running. 10 miles and, and the whole time he was ready to sprint and you could see it in the video I'll 
see if I can find it and um, and and post it with you guys as well. But all that to say, I do want to show that the Tosa, while we don't test them or work them typically here in the West, and we tend to think that they are not capable of much, um, I just want to put out there that they are um, oftentimes out of shape, but not out of order and not out of out of the question. It's just a matter of getting them into shape much the same as you would for yourself if you were if you were um, well out of shape and then from there let them be a Tosa these are extremely athletic dogs extremely strong dogs extremely strong willed dogs and good consistent physical exercise is not only good for them phys physically but it's great for them mentally so I just wanted to, you to kind of see their capacity Mr. Yoshi has never had any sort of um, actually Yoshi and Dante have never been through any sort of uh, physical activity like what we put our dogs through here. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to catch dogs that are fresh um, off the start and, and let you see uh, their development, excuse me, their development over time. It's one thing for me to say, hey, look at these dogs that we bred and how good that they're doing physically, your dog can do it too. Um, and the argument can always be made that it's genetics. But these are dogs that were not bred by us. So, um, anyway, y'all have probably gotten tired of me running my mouth. Really cute cow in the background. We have a lot of cows in the in the next uh, next property next to us, and they are all adorable. They'll come up and say hi and stuff. That's part of the reason why I have the e-collar. It's not so I can get them off of the toy, so I can keep them away from the cows. Again, this is the first part of life that he's ever seen any of that. Um... Honestly, I wish I knew more Japanese. <laughs> but anyway, um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get this set up and get him on it. Before we bring Yoshi over, I just want you to see a couple things I have handy. I have a water bucket. Um, I already told you about some of the other stuff I have handy. I have a water bucket so that he can drink if he's thirsty um, and take breaks, stuff like that. Um, as far as what con constitutes this spring pole, um, they're a very, very simple tool to create. All you need is a sizable, tough toy. Uh, some people don't even use a toy. Some people use fire hose. Um, something extremely rugged and durable that can stand up to sustained biting, hanging, shaking, tearing, things like that. And this rope is not as tough as a fire hose. Uh, first off, I feel like a fire hose is for a dog that's already developed the will to go after a toy, um, and it doesn't require, or excuse me, the dog requires little imagination to go after a fire hose at that point. However, for a dog that's just learning to go after toys, perhaps has never played with a toy in their lives, cough, cough, Yoshi, cough, cough, um, you know, you kind of got to spark them a little bit, get get their interest peaked a little bit. So tassels softer than a, than a fire hose, got the knots for different points to grip, things like that that kind of get them going. Um, once he's really, really used to a spring pole, we can get to the fire hoses and stuff like that as they were going to be a cheaper and more durable option. But for now, again, especially with him, with Dante, um, with dogs that I'm just getting started on the spring pole, um, I'm going to use something that sparks their imagination a little bit. I am going to stay away from squeak toys um, just because, um, I'm, or should I say rather, I'm going to recommend that you stay away from squeak toys just because, um, again, those are high value, high reward for a dog that you're building prey on. It's very quickly for you to um, create a situation where things get way out ahead of you and then you have no control over the situation and worst of all the dog is getting a self-rewarding um good boy every time they continue to bite the thing and it squeaks so it shouldn't take much imagination to imagine how that could go wrong um go wrong quickly so anyway um things you'll notice is that sometimes when you'll see a, a spring pole you'll see um that it is at different heights you'll see some that are high up off the ground you'll see some that are so low to the ground that you could kick it with your foot without lifting your foot too high off the ground uh, this one is somewhere in between and what i ch generally try to do is i try to start low for dogs that are beginning and as they get more experience with it and as they get those muscles developed then we can lift it higher and higher and higher and they can properly hang from it 
and and pull on it and and you know stuff like that if we're talking about puppies um i don't want their feet leaving the ground uh, especially not for the first perhaps 90 days of of being on the spring pole and then after that time has passed we can evaluate how they're developing how they're coming along what they've learned you know is a big one and kind of give them that opportunity to take it up a notch and you know increase their strength and stuff and take it up a notch so what you're not going to see is a dog like you see in some videos coming out here and flying at it from five feet away swinging through the air pulling on it and going at it no but what you can see here is a dog that's going to use this so again you'll notice that yoshi's feet aren't really going to leave the ground certainly not his back feet and perhaps not his front feet depending on where he bites um and as far as this is concerned i want you guys to just note those subtleties um i'm not going to let him growl i'm not and again um you know when it comes to the training that they receive in japan a lot of that is to prevent aggression it's to prevent overt aggression and what would be considered a loss of honor because the dog has missed the point of the fight it's not about being vicious and the same thing here i'm not going to let him lose control i want him to work i want him to work hard but it's not about a loss of control or a venting of frustration it's about going to the gym and putting in work and this is part of our gym um and then the next thing I want to point out again is just how you can get this stuff. This toy actually was at Home Depot, and I was there looking for these pieces of hardware. We'll get into those in a second. But again, I kind of explained why I got this kind of toy. Um, and, and I'll say it again. I feel like it's a good starter toy, good place for a dog to begin learning how to work a spring pole. Um, next up, I have a clip here that's holding on to the toy. Um, this came from Home Depot, this clip right here. Uh, it was like three bucks. This clip is called a cow hook or cow clip or something like that. I forget what it is. Cow something. And um, anyway, also from Home Depot, five bucks. This was less than one buck. It's, a, it's one of the, um, I forget the technical term for it, but it is a chain link and this twists. I don't leave it outside because I don't want it to rust and therefore I also don't tighten it too much more than finger tight. Uh, it doesn't take that much to have it do its job so I don't I don't want it to get stuck. I want to be able to swap out toys. I want to be able to take this down in inclement weather because I don't want it to rust. Um, anyway, moving on. We got the spring here and this is a what is called a porch spring. Um, there are other names for it but that's what we call it down here in Texas. You'll notice um, there's a spring in between a metal bar here that makes a big U and goes up there, or a big V, however you want to look at it. And then there's a metal bar here that makes a big A, doing the same thing on the opposite direction. And that's what holds the spring, and when pressure is applied, that's where that spring comes from. It's important that you have a spring that is matched to your dog's weight. If it's not uh, if it's not, you can end up with issues. So if your spring is too heavy for a light dog or a puppy, um, you're going to end up with it being too stiff. And even if the dog doesn't get hurt, um, they can still do things like losing energy. I mean, losing interest in it. Um, and it doesn't get the workout that it could. The other thing is that they could actually get hurt um, if it doesn't have any spring to it. And they could also lose teeth. So... Um, again, just make sure you match your spring to your dog, their intensity, their size and weight, um, and their, 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 their exercise level or skill level at that point. Um, I would not use the spring with a chihuahua, but I would probably go a size bigger for a full fighting weight, um, um, Matsubetsu class, uh, Tosa that's, that's hitting the upper 80 kgs. I would either do, um just a bigger spring altogether or two <laughs> just because um so yeah there's that then there's another one of these um add a link sort of things uh, again it was like less than a dollar they're not they're not expensive i don't know what they are near you but they're not expensive down here um there's another clip just like this guy not that guy this guy just like this guy up here i don't know if you can see it very well but that's it right there get my finger up there that's it right here and it's clipped onto a chain and the chain again it's heavy duty I don't have string up there I don't want something that's gonna wear down and wear out 
I want something that's gonna last. I want something that's gonna stand up to a dog of of our size. You know, being able to put up sustained work on this for uh, a lot of time. So I went with the chain. I think it's a great option. The main thing to do though, whenever you're picking out what you're gonna use and how you're gonna work with it, just make sure, especially when you're dealing with a um, a dog that's new to this, make sure you have a lot of toy. And you'll notice I have the, the chain up here double clipped um, because of the fact that I don't want chain hanging down all the way down here getting mixed in with the toy that's the last thing I want um, same thing up here I kind of have just one bit of one piece of metal here that's holding at the very very top you know again as he gets older and more experienced not older as he gets more experienced or as a puppy gets older um, we can move this towards the center and and let it hang down from the middle you know um, kind of like that and it would be great you know it's, it's, it's great but for now <clears throat> We need to help him to have a big, big, wide open target area so that he can learn and practice and get used to it. Um, and, and we'll get, you know, he'll get more experience and he'll get used to leaving the chain and other stuff alone. Of course, it's not as it's not as enticing as the stuff that's down here. So we make it very clear, very wide, very open, and we're going to go get him and have some fun here. Good boy. He's going for the top of it, and again, the metal up there is going to put him off of that. But I want him to mess with it. I want him to go after it. You notice that he does have the e-collar on. That's the bright yellow collar. Again, I don't feel like I'm going to have to use that at all. I've never had to use it, but it's nice to have it. Um, but what I'm, my main tool is that leash that's hanging on the ground there. Good boy. Good job. I am going to encourage him when he's doing a good job working on it and pulling on it. I'm going to give him a little bit of a challenge with it. Good boy. Come on, Yoshi. 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 That's a good boy. Come on. Get it, Yoshi. Get it, Yoshi. Good boy. Good boy. Get it, Yoshi. Come on. <laughs> he doesn't really know what to do with it. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Get it, Yoshi. No, nope, don't bite the metal. <laughs> Come on. Get it, Yoshi. Get it, Yoshi. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. I like to see that. I like to see him using his weight against it. I like to see him putting on it. Um, his max exertion so when it comes to it I'm gonna encourage that good job I'm gonna give him pats on the back I'm gonna give him some 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 direction with it if I hear a growl the game is over if I see any sign of him missing the point that the toy is the thing he should be going after the game is over if he breaks the rules the game is over come on Bubba. come on Bubba. get it Bubba. get it Bubba. come on Yoshi come on Yoshi not me. Get the toy. <laughs> there you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Get it, Yoshi. Get it, boy. Good boy. There you go. Come on. Get it, boy. Good boy. Get it, boy. I like the springiness on it. I think it's the perfect size uh, spring for his weight class. There he goes getting some water. That's good. I think it's the perfect size spring for his weight class. Um, so I think it's going to work out perfectly for him and for Dante. Um, and for Kikio, I think she's going to be a little light for it, but um, it'll still be something that works out well. And to be honest, in my experience, the ones that are more intense with any activity typically are the girls. Um, boys take serious situations seriously. They don't tend to they don't tend to take play as seriously. They go, bub. They go, bub. Come on. And again, you see, we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't really done much. And yet, he's drinking water. Drinking water like he didn't have it all day and all night. You know? Come here. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. There you go. There you go. Don't let me pull you. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. So you see I'm putting weight on it, putting a little spring on it, you know, putting a little pull on it, rather a little bit of resistance, helping him to see that this is the thing we're playing with. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Get it, boy. You see he's putting maximum exertion on that. Did I hear a growl? I think I did. There you go. Good boy. I'm going to see if I hear another growl. If I hear another growl, we're going to go a different route. We're going to call it for the day. And we're going to move on to the next thing. Good boy. 
you know, good boy. He's putting good exertion on it. I want y'all to see the spring here. Y'all can hear it. I don't know if you can see how much he's compressing it, but he's doing a good job with it. Good job, bub. Good job. All righty. So now we got a sound. We're going to call it. Op. Okay. Op. Op. So I'm going to put a little resistance on here, give a correction, and we're done. Op. And we always end with, end with manners. Op. Nope. Not ending with pulling dad around. No. Sit. Good boy. There you go. Good job. You did a good job putting out work today. Good job putting out work today. There you go, bub. Good job. And again, the structure in every part of this. He doesn't just get allowed to go after it any more than he does anything else. He's given structure. He give, he's given us a set time, a set place, and it's got rules. If he get, does anything that breaks those rules, the activity is over. Just like any other game that you might play. Um, any other game that you might play with your dog. So when it comes to um, what we do, when it comes to the spring pole, just know that was kind of a basic intro for it. This is his first time on the spring pole. Um, so, so yeah. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and get inside before it starts to rain. Thank you guys so very much for checking out our channel, for watching our videos. I hope I wasn't too boring. Thank you for, for, uh, for following us or watching us. If you do not already follow us, please follow. If you have not liked this video, please like. Um, and uh, please subscribe and you'll be able to keep up with the next videos we put out about Tosas. Um, we love what we do here. There will definitely be more videos. Um, and you can learn a bit more about the breed, learn a bit more about us, um, and, and uh, hopefully it'll be stuff that you'll find useful. Um, one other thing I might would say is that if you can, please share our information. Um, I know a lot of people will say share, 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 um, but for us it's actually more important. You may not know this, but the Tosa is... Um, what we might consider an endangered species here in the US and even in the West, I would say the 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 place that the pit or excuse me, the place that the Tosa is right now is not unlike the place where the pit bull was in the mid-50s throughout the uh, throughout the 70s, in that um, they no longer are used for their original purpose here in the US. Thank God. They are not used for their original purpose. Um, so that kind of leaves a vacuum. The breed's notoriety is going down in that vacuum, but what that opens the door for is for bad actors to get a hold of what remaining specimens there are and use them for, um, we'll say, nefarious purposes. And when it comes to it, um, this is a wonderful breed. We just barely got the pit bull to where it's like 50-50 publicity, right? I'd hate for the Tosa to be the next dog everybody hates. So please share as much as you can. Get the information out there about the breed. It took so long for the pit bull to make a comeback, not because of breeding and responsible breeding practice. No, there's always been people that have been breeding pit bulls responsibly. You know, um, what it took was having people in their corner advocates people who could stand up and say that's not way that's not the way pit bulls act in reality that's a dog that's been abused that's a dog that's been mistreated that's a dog that's been mistrained and that can happen to any breed you know and the more that those people get out there the more you see the pit bull coming out in a better light you know unfortunately it's still got a long way to go but that was the change and the same thing is true for the tosa we need people who are going to get out there and say, hey, look, that behavior right there, that's not a Tosa. This, this, that, the other thing, that's not Tosa behavior. This is an example of an unfortunate set of circumstances that befell an individual dog. It is not what is to be expected of the breed as a whole. Um, so when it comes to it, uh, I, I think it's super important that you share, 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 even more than liking and subscribing, which would be awesome, but share so that the information gets out there and more people learn the truth about the Tosa. All of it, not just the, the, the fighting past, but where they are today, 
and and where they're heading. Um, hopefully, uh, more people will see this, more people will, will share, and the information will be out there. Again, you don't necessarily have to want to get a Tosi yourself, but learn about the breed. Um, we need more advocates. Hopefully, uh, some people watching this will find that true and become an advocate for this wonderful, amazing breed. Thank you guys so much for your time. We'll um, let you let you go and, and enjoy your life and let Mr. Dante get on to his kibble for the day. <laughs> yeah.